welcome back. <laughs> we are now filming episode three of Technically Speaking with DTL. Yes. So, of course, I'm still Alicia. I'm Jillian. And today we are actually having a conversation with my cheerleader voice. Excuse me. We're actually <laughs> having a conversation with the people who actually put the Ag and Aggie. So I think if you watched our Get to Know Us video, we talked about HBCUs. Um, and there are a couple of HBCUs that actually had agriculture programs. One being the one that we went to, North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. Also FAMU, that is uh, Florida A&M. Agricultural and Mechanical University. And then um, Tuskegee has a veterinarian program. Um, but, you know, even if your school doesn't have an ag program, you can still get to know it with some of the science classes or biology classes that are out there. So today, right now, we have Ashley Covington, who is well-versed in ag, <laughs> and she is going to give us some information about her field and what it's like. We might have another special guest join us, but we'll see. How good you guys watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ashley, if you could please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about, you know, your uh, plight in ag. Tell us what you majored in in college, too. Well, like you said, my name is Ashley. Um, I went to North Carolina A&T State University. I <laughs> majored in ag econ for my undergrad and my master's is in ag education, professional trackway, meaning that I was not planning on teaching anybody students. However, that changed, <laughs> and I did end up being a teacher um, for a few years. Um, but I have most of my ag experience has fallen in the lines of corporate America, working with chemical companies, um, working with uh, power equipment companies, things of that nature, stuff that deals with being outside. Um, um, being a black girl in ag has um, definitely has its little challenges, but it's definitely a rewarding industry to go into. It's a field that a lot of people put on the back burner, but you realize that ag is going to be around forever. So yes, technology, yes, sciences, yes, nursing, doctors, everything, but a lot of it still stems from earth. <laughs> that makes sense. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. So tell us this. Tell us what made you get interested in ag. So like you said, there are, especially at A&T. Right, right. Uh, fashion fell into the ag, uh, the, the ag department. Um, animal science fell into the ag department. And then, of course, there are other sciences. But what made you say ag is it for me? <laughs> so my story wasn't like the normal story of anybody that you speak to that went into ag. Usually anybody's going to ag, they had a family farm or they had some interest in like plants or animals and things of that nature. Me on the other hand, anybody who's known me like my whole life or just from high school on out uh, would have never saw me in ag. Um, like you said, the department does have fresh merchandise and design in it. That's where I originally was entering into the ag department. Um, uh, after a couple of incidences, as far as like classing and scheduling, it is a small department for fashion merchandise. And so it was difficult to get classes. I was like, I'm going to be a marketing major, but this, I'm done. Um, and I went and spoke with somebody in the ag department. It was like, you do realize that you can stay in this major and still be in marketing and business, but it could be directed to one industry. And I was like, ag? I'm on nobody's farm. I'm not going to milk anybody's cow. I had the same aspect that most people think of when they hear agriculture. So um, I did some research and I was just like, okay, ag isn't too bad. Like every time I go to the grocery store, I can just turn the labels around and that's another company I can apply for. So I was just like, okay, well, <laughs> let me go ahead and look into ag and I ended up loving it. Like it wasn't something that I went into thinking that I was going to really enjoy. I went in with the mindset, like I'm ready to graduate. So it's a marketing, I'm business econ, I'm going. But then after I started learning about it and getting more in depth into agriculture world, I was just like, yo, like we need more of us in this field. Like <laughs> we need 
more representation of African Americans in the agriculture industry, I was like, this is where I need to be. And then um, after I graduated, I was like, I don't have a job yet. Let me go ahead and get my master's. <laughs> so I went on and um, obtained my master's. But I'll, I'll, in all honesty, if I didn't do ag at an HBCU, I probably still wouldn't have been in the industry. That's only because of the support system that you get being an African American at an HBCU. You, it's a lot. To me, in my mind, it would be a lot difficult for me to see myself staying in the industry where I felt like I wasn't represented being at that age. So I have a question. This is totally off topic. So were you on the farm at A&T? Because I was an animal science major my freshman year, and I just was not going on the farm. Like, that is probably why I didn't stay in animal science. <laughs> so were you on the farm? No. Listen. Okay, <laughs> that's the big thing. Like when people think of animal, like think of agriculture, they immediately say farm. Mm -hmm. A lot of jobs that you don't even have to step foot on the farm. Now, once I actually got into my field, did I go into more farms and stuff like that? Yes, but um, the only time I ever went to a &T farm was whenever I took my general animal science class where I got to learn how to do the, how to, castrate animals and how to um, um, impregnate cattle and um, do a lot of different things as far as like really like taking apart the chicken, you know, like really seeing it from like, oh, it's clucking to, oh, it's meat, you know, like doing all of that. But I would say that if I had to actually be on the farm all the time, I probably would have figured out something else too. But I would have stayed in ag, but like how a lot of people, they don't realize that ag business is something that you can do. Ag econ is something that you can do and you don't really have to really be on the farm as much. Now, if you want to become a veterinarian, suck it up, buttercup. You have to be on the farm. Like, if you want to do anything that deals with animals or anything of that nature, you're going to have to be on that farm. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a farm girl. Like, Do I want a farm? Yeah, but I don't want to manage it. Like, I just want to say I have a farm. Like, I don't want to ever have to actually work on my farm. Um, and I know that sounds so bad being an ag major, but I'm about the money. You know, like, you could you could have ag and you could grow stuff all day, but if you don't know how to sell it and market it and, pr and put it out there for the world to see, you just growing a whole bunch of stuff. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so, so that's a good question. A lot of people will ask. So, is ag a lucrative field? You know, like some people will say, "Is there any money? Why in should it? I? Right. Yeah. Why, why should, should I, I do why, this? Why should I, I look into it? Yeah. Aside from having a love for what I eat and <laughs> animals and everything like that, you know, it seems like a lot of things that people love. Like people love working with kids, but they don't pay anything for education. But how's that inside the ag side? Mm -hmm. Um, outside of saying like, I don't, I like to eat, but I don't really want to learn about my food. Um, <laughs> a lot of people tend to not realize how much of these other industries coincide with agriculture. So like, for example, um, even if you're not an ag major, there's a lot of things that goes into ag that people don't consider. Um, technology majors engineers, um, when it comes down to companies like John Deere, right? They have self-driving tractors. They have all these different things. Somebody in the technology industry had to figure out how to work that. But if you were someone who was like, ooh, I wouldn't even think about working for John Deere or, oh, I wouldn't even think about working for some of these chemical companies. It's like a lot of us take people from other industries but if you have some type, somewhat of an ag background, it would really help you out with those type of jobs. Um, even when it comes down to other sciences, um, thinking about companies like Syngenta or um, it used to be <laughs> my old previous company, Dow, but it used to be Dow and DuPont and all these other companies. Um, Monsanto, which is like the who company, everybody, oh my God, they're killing us. Um, that company, those different things, uh, we need people who can do the research. You could come into uh, a, um, a chemical industry, you come into the chemical industry your first day in, 
working as a scientist and work on one product for all 30 years of your career because that's how long it takes for something to actually hit the market. So when people are like, oh my goodness, they're spraying stuff on the yard and our grass and our food and stuff. It took 30 years for them to even get that approved for them to even start using it. So those are different things. And like, as far as the income, there's people who would do an internship for some of these other random companies. I'm trying to think of a company like um, Johnson & Johnson. You know, like of course, Johnson & Johnson had their hands in everything, right? <laughs> I know people who has exactly like you look up they in there um but I know people who have had internships with John Deere during the summer making good money like you would think that they were actually working full time for John Deere and then graduate making 65 a k 65k a year with a bachelor's degree so it's like the income is there, the money is there. Like most people come into these jobs making about 55 to 65 first year coming out, no experience. You have a master's, you coming in making about 75. It all depends on where you're at. Now, if you're in the production side, yeah, it might be a little lower, but once you start growing in those industries, within about six to seven years, you're making, you could be making six figures. But we don't look at ag. Like ag is really brought, taken away from us. And then we also have, the other side of ag where you have the people that work at McDonald's, right? You have the fast food restaurants. Somebody has to sell them the French fries. Right. Somebody has to sell them the burgers, the Impossible Walk burger, like all those different things have to get sold to someone. So those, go, those are careers that people don't think about. They don't look at the food companies that are producing the food. Those jobs coming in making good money, good health insurance, but they don't really look at it. Um, while you were talking was about it slipped my mind but it's on the tip of my tongue I'm so sorry it, it was talking about basically being able to you know it walked away from me while you were talking so <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yield to right. her and let you, you go ahead right because I when I think of egg I automatically go farming um people who've seen like our previous episodes know that my family not me not not me i'm from winston but my family is from a small community called farmers union and that is the (laughs) and that is the big you know thing there everybody has a farm there's many uh, tractors and you know we kill the pig in the backyard to eat and you know we go pick our collard greens when i'm down there not we i i watch but i eat it so, you know, that it's just been enlightening hearing her talk because that is where my mind goes. That's why I was like, oh, so you were on the farm. But and you were like, no. Even while, I'm talk- <laughs> while we're talking, I'm thinking about the hair side now because everybody has natural hair, right? So people are going to be Not me. I don't, well. I don't have natural hair. Well, so like, <laughs> the funny thing is I used to make my own hair products. And if I knew where I could find lavender and I could figure out how to press it or boil it to be able to strain it and get the oil out of it and I don't have to reach out to a pharmaceutical company <laughs> and pay uh, Excuse me. just about $40 for some lavender, that's egg, right? Mm-hmm. So that's deeper. And then the food, like thinking about the food that we eat. Mm-hmm. One thing for sure, though, is you talked about how historically ag was our thing. Yeah, the and the 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 Native Americans and the African American well, Africans, they didn't take us because they knew you know they thought we could teach them this. We know soil, we grow things, we our skin glistens because we wear the oils properly, you know the things like that. And of course, the Native Americans know like you know the almanac when it was created, it wasn't grows at us. We noticed some things, but even if you go down to the Panama Canal. They got us. They got black people because they knew that we knew how to stop stuff from eating their crops and eating the people. Ingenuity at its finest. Exactly. So the thing is, it's interesting, like you said, because we're trying to break into it. And it's she's like usually the only black person, if not the black woman, <laughs> in the room. And egg is us. Woman. Right. Woman. All of the yeah. above. She's like, all of the above. That is me. But it's I am her. Because egg <laughs> is us. Like, technically, we. we we're slaves. <laughs> we did the crops. And why do I have to bust into it's like coming to my going to Africa saying, Can I get in here? Uh I own this place. <laughs> like, what you mean? Exactly. That's exactly, exactly how it seems. So this is good that you said that. Because it's so much money in it. There's so much money in ag. Like people look at farmers and think poverty. 
these are millionaires. These people are wealthy. And one thing that they hide the most from us is money. If that makes sense. So when people look at ag, they look at this farmer because it's taught like this right here and said, my father did this and we gonna do this, work like this for the rest of our lives. And, you know, and we look at this man as being ignorant. We look at this man as being naive. Really, this man has so much knowledge and make money out of anything. Like he knows what it's like to work through a drought. He knows what it's like to not have um, that money coming in on a regular basis. He know how to budget. He know how to do all this stuff. But we look at that as being less than. Um, and the reason why I think we have came so far apart from ag is one money, mm-hmm. money in it. Two, something that every generation has done. Like I always tell people, like black people are the third world country of America. You know, we teach, their world countries teach their kids to go to school, get an education, get a better job. Don't work as hard as I had to do, do this. And it was great to tell black kids to go to college, do this and stuff. But we walked away from trade. We walked away from land that was handed down from our family members and it got sold to somebody else who had a larger farm. And now they're working in a larger, and like all that stuff happened. So over the years, we became so mm-hmm. separated. From you that. know, I think, um, I just think it's just crazy to me because like you said, like it was kind of, well, from, but behind walking away from it, what actually happened also, it was also snatched from us. So like down in Charleston, they had this area where, um, well, not this area, kind of like King's Tree, Charleston, mm-hmm. Beaufort, where they're taking this land and it's called air property. And what happens is passed down. But of course, we know slavery days, there wasn't really any you know, write it in a will or you might put it in a Bible or something. But these companies come in and they take this land. And even when we were in Panama, um, and even I was in another, in Panama, Walmart has a, a farm, a fish farm in the outskirts of like Cologne over if you go towards the Panama Canal there's a Walmart farm now who did y'all <laughs> take this land from Walmart because I know Walmart <laughs> in Panama but um, but you know just thinking about how that goes back to ag but even if you go down to the housing part of it if you talk about the USDA we had a conversation about it but you know I think you made up another point um, talking about how we think that people who are farmers are kind of just country bumpkins right but like the other day somebody was telling me about land parking and I'm like land per- parking like <laughs> what you mean like yeah this land don't park you know you can't do it on this land I'm like I don't know nothing about no land parking uh, I could percolate but I mean I don't know <laughs> not the percolator not the percolator know, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what you mean or you know like, I read the a Farmer's Almanac. When I was in college, we had to read a book that was not a literature book and explain it and talk about, like, its benefits of it, right? And I read the Farmer's Almanac. So now I know if there's dew on the grass in the morning, <laughs> it's not going to rain in the afternoon. But if there's no dew on the grass, it's probably going to rain. And Jillian will tell you, <laughs> I have this weird thing where... She has ESP when she knows it's going to snow. No, or, so, hurricane, or hurricane. So, or, or earthquake. So what, <laughs> what happened was... She just, She's just started. The she had just started working, right? <laughs> and so what happened was my eardrum was like, and I was like, "What is going on? Something? What is wrong?" And I kept telling her like, "It's gonna something. It's either gonna snow, it's gonna be an earthquake, or it's gonna be a hurricane." It was an earthquake. Later on that week, it was an earthquake. It was an earthquake. But but the thing, see, that's right. Look, your ancestors are speaking to you. That's that ag. It's the ag. It's the ag. It's the agricultural. What is it called? Bar- barometric pressure that gets on my eardrum, and it makes me know like something is going to happen, like a bad, like I get a headache when a bad snowstorm or, some, or something is coming. But I'll tell you that. It's a gift from the ancestors. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. That's how I know, like the native people and the and the other people, where it takes science and it takes research. It's just in us to be able to tell, like you know, people are, oh my bone, my knee hurt, my bones hurt. <laughs> yeah, because it's raining. You know what I mean? And I think we forget how in tune we are with agriculture. Stop laughing at me. I'm not. La- I'm not My laughing. Old lady. At- <laughs> I'm not laughing. I am laughing at her. But <laughs> let's get back to like. Um, let's get to it. 
You had made mention of like making your own hair products and things and the whole like natural, holistic, you know, market is like booming now. Everybody is all about natural, holistic medicines and all natural creams and hair products and, you know, reading, reading the labels. Like you said, and that's egg. You're reading the label. You be like, oh, I can apply there. So, you know, do you have any um, interest in that market or can you give us any input on that market? Or is that just not your... Um, I, I can't say it's not my area because I grew up in the cosmetologist household. So I definitely am the person who's going to experiment on anything. And just like Alicia said, like she made her own oils and stuff. I was like, you know, I want my hair to grow. Let me go look at some stuff. Let me go research some stuff because I couldn't convince her to make me some stuff. So <laughs> research. And um, I was like, well, I went, I'm in school for egg. I, I could make some oil. Like what? that's nothing. But um, I will say that when I was a teacher, we used to have this program, I mean, this like thing that the kids had to do like a project. And um, as an ag teacher, being an elective, you always got students who didn't want to be in your class anyway, because they didn't want nothing to do with ag. But I had girls who was in my class who was like, well, what I'm supposed to do for my project? I said, well, you always changing your hairstyle. I said, make a hair product. I said, that's ag. I said, I know that your other teachers who are not in my Color wheel. <laughs> oh, wow. they, um, they won't really look at you making a hair product as ag, but you're in my class. So I'm going to accept you making a hair product as ag because if you go do your research and find out what lavender does, you go do what, find out what coconut oil does, what um, all these different things that you could put inside of some oil to make your hair grow, you can track how long your hair is growing throughout the semester. You can track how it's changing by you using all these natural products. And I had students who really did try to achieve it. They were like, okay, well, let me try it out. Um, I will say that as far as my expertise in that area, I can't say like, oh, you know, I feel like it's going to grow and it's going to just blow up and everything like that. But I will say this is one of those things that if you're interested in it, if you're interested in making your own stuff, this is the time to do it. This is the time to try it out. This is the time to try to um, make a profit off of it because there are still a lot of people in this world who don't feel like doing it. Like they just don't like, and that's where we make our money off of is people who's like, I don't want to make it. I just want to buy it. So <laughs> if you are interested in that, then that's a great area to go in because that's where the world is. And with us being in the house and our quote unquote restrictions across the U.S., um, I feel like a lot of people are starting to realize that their focus was on the wrong things all these years, as far as like what's healthy, what's not healthy, what's going to make my skin glow, what's going to make my hair grow, what's going to make me feel lighter, but still full, like all those different things. They've had more time to really pay attention to. It, right. So. But, you know, even thinking about it all. It's kind of making its way to America. So America's kind of late. <laughs> We've been relying on other things. But when you think about India, um, Asia, Southeast Asia, they have these things and they use them. Or even if you go down to the to the Amazon, right, and you talk about the Brazilian people or the people who are secluded, um, they're using the earth, agriculture, to heal and, uh, you know, do things mm -hmm. for themselves. So, like, Ayurvedic medicine has always been a thing, right? And, of course, the rich Anglo people, maybe, could be black people, too. Um, because even then, if you go down to the Caribbean, they use, you know, the different things as well. But they go to these different countries and get healed. So, like, soursop, we can't even have that in the United States because they know the medicinal power of that piece of agriculture. And it's crazy because if you try to even come through the air, listen, we'll come back from Panama. I had flowers. I got detained. <laughs> I told her to put that flower in her suitcase, y'all. I said, put it in your suitcase. In my, I, I didn't get stopped. My flower was in the suitcase. I didn't want mine to die. I didn't want mine to die. So I was like, I'm not putting it in there. No. But you know what? That, that kind of makes, um, with the whole holistic, the veganism aspect of it too, which is probably like a whole nother thing. Um, but you know, that's egg too for those who are interested. It's, it's funny how much like falls into egg and agriculture. Even down to the lights. Though. Even down to our right. lights, solar panels like and stuff. things like that, solar yes. power, all that's still egg. All that's still egg. 
So there's always a job in A. I think another thing is there's actually, if you go to a land grant institution, mm-hmm. um, what is that? The USDA, USDA um, what is scholarship. That? What is that? You get a ride. Yeah, and you get the a scholarship. Job with the so, uh, in the beginning, or is it even, yeah, a grant or a scholarship or something? They give it to you every yeah, year. Yeah, so or something it's a like scholarship. That, they take your room and board, um, food, books, tuition, and then like during the summer, you do internships with the USDA. When you graduate, you have a job with the USDA. Okay. So that's good that's stuff. For and any so, grant. so that's A and T, FAMU, Tuskegee, Perry View, um, all of those schools. And so, Ashley, I'm sorry, go ahead. Hog in the mic. Oh, one more thing. Hold <laughs> um, up. But... With that scholarship, though, now they have opened it up to students in technology. Oh. You're a technology major. Look into it because I told you technology goes into agriculture as well. Um, some science degrees, it goes over and says, so it used to be strictly, strictly to you like agriculture degrees, but they are starting to open it up because if you work for the USDA, they also need people who can work in the technology part of the USDA or the other parts of you. So they're opening it up to other majors now. Right. That's awesome. So she said that she's been a teacher and I really want her to tell about how um, she was able to kind of actually get people on the ag path to the point where I want you to tell us about your students that she, you know, led to ag. Tell us about that because I think it's like Great mm-hmm. to hear, especially as a black woman. I don't, I don't think people realize, like, you know, they talk about Harriet Tubman and how she led people to freedom. But we're all technically Harriet Tubman, except for she went back for that man. But, um, <laughs> and he said, <laughs> that is not, <laughs> and, you know, he turned her in, but, you know. Uh, it's okay. You know, we are all Harriet Tubman. We take on, you know, our answers. <laughs> Stop laughing. Because, look. You go back, you reach back, which you did, and she told these kids about. Stop laughing! I'm not laughing. She's laughing on the inside. You know how people look like they're laughing on the inside. I can see it in her soul. I can't even look at her eyes. That's that agriculture right there. You see how she called it in my soul. <laughs> the ancestors. So I want you to tell us about how you were able to, you know, get some people on the right track to get into egg. and tell us about, you know. Is your school paid for? You know, tell us about that. Um, before I go into that, as far as like the holistic thing and how y'all was talking about how we can't get stuff in, mm-hmm. one thing that I've realized with the American mindset, we are a money country. Mm-hmm. Anything that's going to make us make more money and allow us to keep stuff restricted, we're we're going to block it. Um, so there are a lot of things that people you know, have a mindset that everything video. in another country is bad. That's, that's just what we've been built to believe so many years. Right. So when you say something came from Asia, like the reason why a lot of those countries can keep those traditions is because a lot of ways, the westernized ways are not allowed in those countries. So that's why you see those women with long, beautiful hair, beautiful skin, looking young forever, guys looking great for like years to come because a lot of the restrictions that we uh, um, apply to the US, they apply to their countries. Like, nah, I don't want that artificial sugar here. Like, don't put that sugar here. Like, I don't want that. Um, so that's one reason. Like, it's, it's a money thing. It's a control thing of why we don't get those type of things here. Um, but as far as being a teacher, um, I have definitely converted a lot of students. <laughs> to going to ag, but it was a lot of it had to do with, like, explaining to them that they have to stop looking at ag as just being a farm driven industry. Um, and I had to explain my stories to my kids. Like when I said I was going to school for ag, people was like, oh, you're going to work at a grocery store. I was like, what? I said, Does your peas grow in a can on the farm. Like, like when you go to the, when we go to the farm, do you pick cans or do you pick corn? Like, how, how does that work? So they were like, oh, well, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, you got to think about it. Like there's so many pieces that goes into it. Um, there's a lot of research jobs. So when I would talk to my students and they would say, hey, well, I'm interested in doing, let's just say I'm interested. I love science. I like doing research. I said, well, we need you in ag. Like, I know you probably thinking about going to NC State um, to uh, study in some biology type course. And that's fine. That's great. And Danny, I'm not telling you not to do it. But what I am telling you to do is add an agriculture aspect to your to your plans in college and stuff because 
we need the person who can figure out how to make this corn last in a healthy way for people to get it to their house and eat it. Because not all of us have access to a farmer that we could go buy our crop from, our crops from fresh. Not all of us have the access to get the most expensive food in the quote unquote organics. Anyway, organic (laughs) foods, um, things like that. So it really opened their eyes up to realize that there was more than just farming. And then I had my students who was like, oh, I want to be a veterinarian. I'm like, you do know that people only bring their animals when they're sick, right? Like they don't bring their animals when they're happy. So do you like animals? Like you like playing with them? Or do you want to bring, make them feel better? Because I saw you in class almost pass out when I showed the Tate Worm video. So I don't think you need to be an ag, I don't think you need to be in a, a veterinarian. However, have you thought about starting a grooming company? Because that's ag. Like, have you thought about um opening like a place where the animals can come and do daycare because people do take care of their animals like they're real kids like they take their kid their dogs to daycare i know someone every who morning. left their dog at the groomer for <laughs> Let them play. i mean for the whole month <laughs> right <laughs> so that was one thing and then i did have a lot of students who were like who were gun ho on ag but they never thought about a and t and me i have nothing against nc state i don't right. kind of i don't know i just i just think i don't like the school because it's not a and t and that's just me, all right? So <laughs> I had students who will look at those schools and be like, well, they got the best this. I said, if you're not going to Purdue, you need to take your butt on down to a and Because if you're not going to somewhere that is almost like the cream of the crop of ag, like, oh my, like you going to MIT for a technology major. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody said, oh, I got an MIT. I'm not going to tell you to go to Smith Paul at A&T, but, but MIT, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like, you know, so I had to really, what I had started doing at my school was doing like a and Welcome to the Family Party. So I ended up getting like all the ag made, all the eggs, Aggies at, at my high school. And what we would do is I would go to the counselor department, say who all accepted going to a and I would contact each one of those kids, send them invitations, and they would come to my room. We'll have cupcakes, t-shirts, like all this stuff, a and have the band playing. We'll give our contact information. Let them this, was huh? yeah, this was pre-COVID. Yes, this was pre. This was pre-COVID. Yes, pre-COVID. Yes, yes, yes. pre-COVID. Yes. Pre- <laughs> pre-COVID. I haven't worked in teaching. Like, oh, right. Whenever I became a teacher, when I started, yeah, COVID was not a thing when I was a teacher. Um, but I would do all those different things, and like the students would get excited about going to A and T. And I noticed that the next year, I had students like, "Oh, I'm going to A and T. Well, what you studying? Not sure yet. We're looking to add." Because you can literally do work for any company in ag. You can even be a banker because we have loans. We have U.S. loans. We have loans for farms. We have a whole department that's just about providing money to farms. That's that's banking. Like, you know, so we have the Farm Bureau. That's another <laughs> bank. And it's like, it's so much that goes into ag that nobody even thinks about. So like when I would break down the different career paths to my students, they'll be like, oh, Okay, well, let me let me write this down now. Let me add this to the list. Right. So when you were like um, advertising and, you know, recruiting um, students, did they ever ask you what it was like being one of the only African-American faces or African-American woman faces mm-hmm. in ag? Like what and what would you tell them when they asked you that? And not even just my black students, my white students would ask this question. Right, too. right. And that's because I was recruiting white students too to go to a and I'm like, look, all y'all can go. We all, everybody come right. on. Right, because they didn't get a scholarship. Um, oh. <laughs> so um, <laughs> one thing I never did was keep my story a secret to my students. Mm-hmm. I never kept like the hard parts away from them. Um, when I first started my first career, which was in corporate America, um, my mentor, who was a black guy, his statement to me was, Ashley, you have the least in common with everybody here. And I was just like, at first I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, like I, I get along with everybody. Like I could. <laughs> but I had to start really thinking about what he was saying. He says, as a black man, what I have in common with the white man is that we're both men. As a white woman, what they have in common with the white man is that they're both white. What do you have in common with the white man? There's not like there's always like a base for them. Like as a black woman, what do I have in common with most of my customer base? What do I have in common with most of my coworkers? 
like Alicia said, there was times whenever I would be in like West Virginia, I would walk into a room, 300 white men. Even the people who worked at the hotel. Are you lost, darling? <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was one of those things that, you know, they always talk about black people always late. Like, I could not disappear. The black girl could not disappear. They always knew that I was the new person there. Because, hey, there's this one random black woman there. So <laughs> in those environments, I had explained to them, like, it's not going to always be easy. And there's going to be times where you feel so drained, like you just want to cry. Like you just want to break down because you're like, I cannot be my genuine self. I cannot be who I am. Like, I want to sit up here, feel like I could kick back, relax. But I know that everybody is watching every little thing that I'm doing. Every if the way I hold my fork, the way I interrupt a conversation, the way I walk into a room, the, all these little things that we don't think about, they're paying attention to. Right. Like I've had coworkers come up to me and say, Oh, you know, I went to AT and the only person I recruited was a white girl. Ain't that crazy? Ha ha ha. And I'm supposed to sit here and be like, he he, that is crazy. But really, I want to be like, what boy? You better like I like go off. Like, you know, I want to be like, oh, like. Yo, I give you a list of people to talk to. What you talking about? Like, but I can't. I can't because if I do that, I'm an angry black woman. If I do that, I don't know how to approach a situation. So I had to be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. You know, the, like the list that I gave you didn't was able to reach none of those people. Like I have to sit up here and be as surprised as him. But really, my surprise is a different surprise from him. Like my surprise is like you really just ignored it. Like what's wrong with you? Right. Um, so it's, I always explain to my students, it's not going to be easy. And I explain to my students who are white, like, if you go into this industry, please be the person who change that, that mindset within your company. Please be that person who looks at the resume and look at it as a resume. Look at the, the candidates and look at them as a candidate. Don't look at them because they didn't go to Purdue. They didn't go to NC State. They didn't go to some of these schools that, are quote unquote the ad cream of the crop. Like you look at them, you see that they had these internships, they did this stuff, they had a GPA. That's what matters. You look at them and see how they do their interview. You that's what matters. Like be the person who changes their mindset. And with my black students, be the people that don't give up. Cause it's gonna be hard. But even now, like from whenever we started working, like shoot, I just realized that this year I'm 15 year anniversary from high school. Like, like Live time has changed. How, you realize how old you are? <laughs> <laughs> time has changed so much over just like graduating from college. Been 10 years from graduating from college this year. Like what people in the generation before us would tell us, don't come in here with a nose ring. Don't come in here with your natural hair. Don't come in here with highlights. Don't like make sure they feel comfortable around you. That aspect has changed so much even within ag like you're starting to see people just be like oh they could do the job hire them like they could like so keep that same momentum going and like when you hit those roadblocks one things that they didn't teach us in hbcus write down everything if that guy get in your car and say you're not supposed to listen to this music you're supposed to listen to this music which actually happened to me <laughs> Write that down, like report that stuff. Like don't sit up here and feel like if you report it, people are look at you strange. They go, they're looking at you strange anyway. Right. You're back. They're already looking at you weird. So you might as well go ahead and let them know that you're not coming at me this way because you can't get buck with them. Because if you do, you're angry and black. You know? You're so aggressive. do it the politically you correct. Yeah, like, you're, you're, right, right. Right. Um, so tell us about where you what do you do now? Like, what do you do now? And how long have you been doing it? And what do you like the most about that job, so, career field? I am back in sales. Um, teaching was great. I loved it. But they don't have to fix the education system some more. And what I mean by fixing the education system is, one, tell parents to fall back. Your child was failing because your child was failing. All right? And I'm not about to give them a good grade because you feel like your child is a good kid. I think your child is a good kid as well. But they were failing. Um, number two, pay me my money. Give me my coins. Like, I shouldn't be sitting up here. Y'all up here, oh, y'all get summer breaks and summer breaks to sit at the house because I'm broke. 
<laughs> what do you like? I've had too many teachers who were 30 years in working a part time job. I didn't go to school for four years and then go get a master's and then have to sit up here and work two jobs. For what? Because I just want no, no. So give me that money. Um, so once they fix those two things, I probably go back to being a teacher. But um, what I'm doing now is I do work for another corporate company. Um, because I like them, I'm not gonna say their names because you know <laughs> I don't want nobody to be like, oh, we heard about you saying something. No, but I will say that this this journey with corporate America has was completely different from my previous one. Mm-hmm. Um, my first round with corporate, which is why I ended up being a teacher. Um, they went through a merger, but they was also wait, figuring out ways to get rid of me. It, it would be as simple as, oh, we sent out surveys to your customers and they haven't heard from you. Well, show me the list of those customers. Well, those customers was never on my list. So that's why they never heard from me. I didn't even know they were my customers. So they would do little like vindictive things like to try to build a case on me. Like I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Um, but then... I went to teaching because I was like, I'm done with corporate. I'm not, I'm not dealing with them no more. So then now I'm back in there again and I work in sales again. Um, I enjoy it so much. I do. Having, huh? What region do you work in? Having, huh? What region do you work in? What area so I still do you work, work in? in? Oh. Um, <laughs> I still work in ag. I deal with the beautification oh, of your yard. I deal with the <laughs> what part of the United Making States? Making your yards look amazing. <laughs> That is what I do for a living. So I make sure that your your yard is is for cookouts. Your front yard is not getting talked about by the neighbors because you don't know how to take care of it. <laughs> I sell the cream of the crop in. in if, hold on. if you can't tell, they're they're clearly friends. Y- y- y'all are friends, correct? <laughs> y- yes, y- y'all are clearly She's friends. She's my best friend and, and the godmother can- of my children. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, God. She's trying to get you to tell us where you live. Oh, and that's where, where you live. live. I'm in Alabama. Okay? I, I live in Birmingham, I Alabama. Did. That's where I live. <laughs> So that's that's another thing, right? So you also live, and I'm trying to recruit her some friends in Alabama, so <laughs> that might make a difference. But you also live I gotta in, in Alabama. What part? I, I think because she need friends in Alabama. Um, because oh god, I can't. My stomach hurts from laughing. <laughs> but um, that's another part is also finding your niche where you're not from, right? So you're working in a white industry, predominantly white industry. Um, PWI, another PWI, um, and you li- are living in a predominantly white area. So it's like, you know, how do you find an outlet, right? So, I mean, if you're not, what's that area called? Ooh, Selma. Girl, you're not I in Selma, Selma or you're not in okay. Tuscaloosa. <laughs> so <I'll go> <laughs> Selma, you know, mobile. What was it mobile or mobile? Mobile, mobile, mobile Alabama. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> The best place really? in Alabama you know, for an African American outside of Montgomery and Huntsville, I ain't living nowhere else. If it ain't Huntsville, Birmingham, or Montgomery, your girl not living there. Okay, there's too many back corners, streets, and, and little cupboards hiding. Pop out, woo! You like, oh shoot! <laughs> I voted for Trump. I'm sorry, I voted for Trump. Please don't shoot me. Like, I did not vote for Trump, guys. I'm just saying, like, that's how you feel when you see them. Like, um. But we you know, do not endorse any specific I started working candidate. In the library, yeah. I feel like when I lived in Lexington, Kentucky was was way worse than here. Um, and that's because it was like living living in Raleigh. I, I could compare North Carolina. Like, let's say you live in Raleigh, and NC State is the only school there. That's how Lexington was. So I was I was more uncomfortable living in Lexington than I was in Birmingham, but. As far as becoming adjusted to an area where you don't see yourself as often, or when you do see yourself, it's like very um, masterist, like meaning like, I've a, I got this fork for you, I <laughs> place for you. Oh no, you're gonna get in trouble. Like seeing your people looking like that, it kind of like, oh my gosh, y'all, don't, did they tell y'all we're free? They didn't, they didn't tell y'all. So there's certain parts in my my area within my territory that you'd be like oh gosh but 
you have to also remember that a lot of these places still have HBCUs within their within these states because this is where HBCUs thrive. So you can still find those black communities where you're finding people who are educated. You're finding people who have similar things with you. Is it harder now because of COVID? Yes. Yes. The black bourgeoisie. The black bourgeoisie. This is what they're called. See, my microphone never likes to work with me. The it, black bourgeoisie. You got to use your voice. <laughs> I mean, my throat hurt. Uh, uh, hollering. <laughs> 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 What? You definitely have Listen. your black bougie. Okay. The ones that are yes. like right. that's, a, that's another that's your another debut right. type um, of energy. There's nothing wrong with the Southern Bell. There's Something nothing wrong with the Southern Bell. It's not. <laughs> Trust me. I am the queen right of being here. like, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. But them them they over there, they can fix it for me. Like, you don't know how to change a flat tire? I do, but there's a man that can do it for me. Sure. Sorry. I would. I tap into Southern Bell real quick. However, there's ones out here that don't know how to tap out. Right, and I think that's what you know that gender role. That's that could be an episode spin off too. That's that gender role. I, I mean, you know, tap out of it. I like my tea sweet and my manu- mannerisms. You know, that's the Southern Listen, Bell. I don't. They don't know how to tap out I of it. I was raised in a different. Well, by, they don't know how to tap out of Southern Bell. Where it's like, yo, like, <laughs> chill out with that. Got you. <laughs> your legs and arms work um, but I was raised by well so that's another episode we're not going to talk about that today we're going to talk about you know you being an egg and a black woman an egg so any other questions I guess like the main thing we want to get out there is egg is so broad it's like popping. it is so broad and it is so it just reaches it, it branches into so many different things and that's <laughs> It is Sunday. It is Sunday. But we just, I'm done with you. <laughs> but we want people to know that this is an option. It doesn't mean that you're working on a farm. It doesn't mean that you're you out, out here with the animals. It doesn't mean that you have to wear overalls. It, it means sales. It means you like wear overalls. Tech, technology. It means so <laughs> many different things. And we just, you know, we want to promote that, get people out there, p- make people look, because we want to see more of us. Yes, and it's a beautiful black girl. girl. You don't have right. to be rough and work in ag either. Right. You don't have to be like uh, my nurse Ashley from where was she from? Bolivia. I mean, what's this? It's a small place in North Carolina. Oh, Ashley from Broadway, North Carolina. She was real rough. You could tell she worked on the farm. <laughs> but, but you don't have to be like that. Producer, cut that part. <laughs> Producer, please. 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 Oh my God! Cut that part, please. <laughs> I highly doubt, and all these people in the world, if somebody it's gonna be her. She gonna see it. I brought. We go. Somebody must be. Somebody's probably gonna be watching a podcast. They let me delivery. out right there. <laughs> I am not gonna be watching the podcast and living in the library. And they're gonna be like, Ashley from Broadway, North Carolina. She's gonna say, oh, they just making this section even longer and longer. Broadway, like two. <laughs> Two people in Broadway, and you named one of them. That's the nurse, and everybody's well, gonna know. Think about it. How Jesus many nurses Christ. from there? No, is, she's is okay. Named she's right. from there and, and named that. Your nurse at that, because they know you, Alicia. They don't know me. They won't see my. She won't oh, remember my face. Right. So we just want people to know <laughs> that agriculture reaches, and it, it, it's it's so many different different things. Like you know, it doesn't mean one thing. And there are beautiful black women like yourself thriving beautiful. in this in this field. And we have got to get more people out there. <laughs> and that is what we're gonna say. We are <laughs> Oh yeah, there's something about You're absolutely right. Um agriculture is a the, the new word that the African Americans has learned is monolithic. You know, they they've been using that heavy on Instagram lately. Like <laughs> been around for years. Um agriculture is <laughs> monolithic <laughs> industry. 
nah. <laughs> but no, like in all reality, that really, <laughs> that really is true. What you're saying is that there are so many different areas that people can go into. It could go to the holistic side. It could go into waste management. It could go into um, just like scoping out the land. Like, is this land, like you were talking about, can you grow stuff on this land? Can you build stuff on this land? Um, perk. Go into just our food, our clothes, our going green, saving the world, saving the environment, all that stuff, pollution, working for the government, working in banking, working in technology. There's so many things you can do in ag and it's not limited to just where does the food come from? It's more so where does the food go? Where does the crop go after it's gone? Right. Right. And if that's your in thing, my belly. you can do that too. I was going to say that. But I, in my <laughs> belly. I was like, um, the and if she said in her belly. The crop the goes in my goes. belly. Yes, but then it has to come back out. That's still ag. Waste management. Did you get a waste, waste management. management. People, using their, people using waste to grow stuff. I don't think that's the same thing. <laughs> waste management. Is waste management ag? Huh? It's waste management. Uh-huh, because you can do, what's that called? Hydroponic farms with um waste mm. the the fish eat their own waste and then they i mean they eat the food and it comes out and it fertilizes we're gonna cut that the, part too the, <laughs> we're gonna cut that part too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's called hydroponic farms and if we ever have a bloopers it, reel i want this to be on there <laughs> they are talking about that's what happens with i might though right hydroponic farm hydroponic farms is a thing but i but we are trying to promote people to go into egg. I don't think nobody want to do that. Like, I, I don't actually, think if we're trying actually, to promote, actually, if, if we're trying to promote it, like we want to give them the glamour too, give them a see, little razzle dazzle. That's another thing. The U.S. The Virgin Islands actually has a uh, PhD. Well, I don't even know if the school still yeah. exists, yeah, but they have a PhD program that's down there. And I learned about hydroponic farms from somebody who went to that school. So, but I'm gonna tell you this. Let me ask you. I do have a question. This is a real question. Everybody ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Where does broccoli come from? I've never seen a broccoli where farm. Does broccoli come I've from? never. S- yes, I think. Where? The ground. Where? Like there's broccoli farms. Ground. <laughs> like a cabbage. What? Yeah, like they grow out the ground. Yeah. Like you plant I've never broccoli seen broccoli seed, growing. And broccoli come out. Right. I've never seen broccoli, broccoli tree. Farms. Who? You have one? No, I actually there's, there's a broccoli farms. There's broccoli farms. They grow broccoli at the ground. In what state? I don't know. Cause y'all lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not saying. I'm about to look it up on my phone. But no, broccoli, the broccoli doesn't have like a. I don't. From my understanding, broccoli doesn't have like a natural seed that regrows like you could like it, you could take the seed and grow broccoli yourself. So then you have how to you actually get a genetically modified seed. Oh, so it's not real. It's real. Okay, so how did where's cauliflower come from? See, look, it grows out the ground just like a cabbage, just like we said. Look at oh. that. It comes out the ground. Oh. See. I've never seen it before. I just wanted to know. They're, and they're, they're know here. They're in the because, U.S. Because people were saying on, you know, because everything on the internet is true, <laughs> that uh, broccoli is genetically modified. It's not real. It is genetically modified, but it still grows naturally. So if you're, if you say, I only eat organic That's egg. foods. That's egg right there. You say, I only eat organic foods. You're but an you idiot. eat cauliflower or broccoli. You're lying. <laughs> Huh? It's, I said, if you say I only eat organic foods, and you eating broccoli or cauliflower, you lying. I think organic means like what you put on it. No, nah, no. Nah, if they eating or if they're eating broccoli, they're not eating organic foods. Like they, they, it would be to okay. I put it like this. You know how you have your I'm a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian. I. It almost be like that. So like if you like hardcore organic to the core, you're not eating broccoli. But if you're somebody who's like how you were saying it's about how you what you put on it, what chemicals you put on it, and that's what you determine as organic, then you might be eating some organically grown broccoli, meaning that the the environment that is growing in is an orga- is an organic environment. So both of y'all could be correct. Look at there. 
Yeah, I've always thought about environment when I think in organic, not so much of. Yeah, it just depends on what you consider as organic. So for like me, when I Wait, see somebody saying I'm eating organic, but you're eating organic, you. eating yeah. organic gummy bears, like how is that organic? Please don't eat organic, organic gummy they bears. They have to put it in to make it into a gummy bear. Like that's not. Don't eat sugar-free gummy bears for the life of you. Please don't eat sugar-free gummy bears. <laughs> Please, God. Well, so it one question we ask a lot of people, everybody, um, is if somebody was saying that they wanted to get into egg, mm-hmm. what are three things you would tell them to help them be successful in this? You don't have to have an ag degree to get into ag. That's the number one thing. Um, now, will people look down at you because you ain't got an ag degree? That's just that bouginess that is, oh, I, yeah, that's it. But you don't have to have an ag degree to graduate, to go into ag. Um, don't limit yourself to what you think ag is as far as when you're trying to go into the industry. And don't let other people put their limitations onto you or what they think agriculture is. Um, And my last one, just don't give up. Even though ag is, um, some people look at ag and be like, it's not that difficult. It is a very difficult industry to get into. Um, And that's because it's been blocked off. Like a lot of people who get into the industry stay in here until they retire. Like this is like a retiring industry. Like, so don't give up. If you do have to take the lower road to at least get your foot in the door, take it when you're younger. Like the older you get, the harder it is to accept making thirty-five thousand a year. When you first out of college and you never made no money before, thirty-five thousand a year sounds like you are balling. Okay, so don't give up. Um, don't give up. So yeah, that was my thing. You don't have to have an ag major to get into ag. Ag doesn't have limitations, so don't allow anybody to put those limits on you, and don't give up. That would be my three things, because when I first graduated with my ag degree, like I told you, I would go in Walmart and literally turn around all the labels and write down the name of these companies. And then we'll go home and like search the companies to see if they have positions open. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's what I would say. That's 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 perseverance right there. Like that's mm-hmm. that's I'm pushing through. That's awesome. Let see. <clears throat> Let me see what they're talking about. Um. Yeah, so that's definitely good information. Um, what else? I think that's, you know, our biggest thing. We just want to promote these things because we want to see us black women thriving and thriving, thriving. thriving in all aspects and all careers and all fields. So, yeah, so we really appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. Joining us um, <clears throat> on your Sunday evening, yes. evening. It's Sunday evening. You can't hear me? No, I couldn't. Oh, my gosh. Well, we really appreciate you joining us on this Sunday evening. Um, Afternoon. Excuse me. We really enjoy (laughs) you meeting with us on this Sunday (laughs) afternoon. Um, You know, I know that it's going to be, you know, if it was pre, it was. Pre-COVID, it would have been hard to meet on Sunday afternoon because people would have already been having dinner by now um, or coming back from church. <laughs> uh-huh, because people go to the early morning services or they out eating so they can get, you know, brunch. But we're so happy that we had got the opportunity to meet with you. Um, and we look forward. We might have another phone call. I mean, phone call. Lord Jesus. Another call. Um where we, people can ask questions and things because I think, Absolutely. you know, you have a lot of great information and I think they yeah. would have a lot of questions after watching this. So we might have like a, a, a career fairs, I mean, career, fa- oh, that would be dope, a career fair episode or, um, you know, ask the previous Some guests. Segment yeah, or yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. We really enjoyed uh, meeting with you. And uh, I'll call you later. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) See you later.